Hey students, it's Karen Bernstein here in Katy, Texas with the instructions for our Just Chicken In card class. So this is a five by five square card. It features a big clear round window on the front so that you can see the collapsed chick. It says Just Chicken In. And then there's a magnetic flap at the top so that when you open it, you ready? Ta-da! A double stack ball chick. It spins around on a brad, has an extra little chick hanging out on the wings. And we chose this card specifically because I think in these times, it is important that we let people know that we're thinking of them, that we're checking in on them, you know? So imagine sending this card to somebody and the surprise that they will get when they pull it out of the envelope and then this happens. Okay, so let's get started. I'm gonna turn the camera down and we're gonna make ourselves a cool card. Okay, the first thing is I'm going to assume that everybody did their kit prepping. Okay, so here in the instruction sheet, it shows you the, where the video is of me prepping my kit. And that's me going through the paper pre-cutting instructions and the die cutting instructions, stopping when I get to class day instructions. So we are here at class day. Now, if you didn't do that, that's fine. Still watch the video today but it's not going to be easy for you to craft along with us because you haven't actually done your die cutting. So then just watch the video, ask any questions, do all that. That video will still be available to you to come back and watch to actually put your card together if you haven't had a chance yet to prep your kit. Okay, but I, I'm going to assume that we do have prepped kits. And so um, we're gonna go right here onto our class day instructions. And actually the first thing, let's make sure that we have our class day tools and adhesive. So we need a pair of scissors. We have that, we need a tape runner or some strong tape, some dries clear glue and a fine tip bottle to be able to do small bits. So I've got that. And then a paper piercer so that we can put the brad through. And then a quick stick is optional, but helpful. So that's something like this, or if you have a you know jewelry picker or anything like that to be able to pick up things and when we're putting our chicks together. And then one thing that isn't on this list, but if you just have any kind of pen, we're gonna need to mark the location for our brad. Okay, so let's dig into our class day kit that we've already done the prep work on. And get all of this stuff out. Okay. And you did a little work on your card as part of your prep instructions because you had to get this circle die cut into it and in the flap, okay? So you should be looking at something like this. And then somewhere in your kit, there is a square of transparency. And the first thing we're gonna do is actually get that transparency into this opening between the two layers and glue it down. So for it, transparencies, I tend to find that a dry adhesive works the best. So that would be something like a tape runner or if you had some glue dots or some strong tape. And I'm just gonna basically hit the corners. That should be enough to keep it in there. And I just need to make sure that I covered the circle so it doesn't have to extend far in any direction. Okay, oops, that adhesive's on the top. Okay, and then, um, well, let's see, let me do it this way. I turn it over this way and peel this back, then I have access to this paper to be able to add more to. Okay, all right, and then we just wanna seal that all up. So then the transparency, let me move this, then the transparency is between the layers then. So now we have a window card with a transparency window. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm gonna try not to go too fast on the video because I know you guys are actually crafting with me here. So I'm going to really try to make sure I don't go too fast. But since we're not in a situation where you can tell me to slow down, I'm gonna to have to just kind of go by feel. I actually was trying to decide if I had this cut to where the pattern matched up because I thought I did, but I wonder if maybe I didn't. It doesn't really matter. Which side do I think looks best? That's a square. Um, I'm gonna go with this one. Okay, so this one, I'm gonna leave it to you on your adhesive choice. It's just paper to paper. So if you're a tape runner person, you could use your tape runner. I tend to use glue for everything. I live in basically the Houston area of Texas. So we have pretty hum humid um, weather down here. And I had just have found that my glue, my Lineco neutral glue just holds up better to our kind of heat and humidity over time than my tape runner. 
So I have now become a person that uses glue almost all the time for everything. So except transparencies, transparencies, they really do like a dry adhesive. Okay, so we've got our paper put inside the card and then looking at our class day instructions, it says add the other square and then use one of the ball halves as a template to decide where the chick's gonna go. So before we put the chick together, we can use that little center hole to figure out where the brad needs to be to hold the chick. So what I would do is go in there and center it, which is easy to do because you can make sure this line is here and this line is here and then just look to the side. Okay, but I would not pierce a hole yet. I would just mark it with a pen. And there's a reason for that. And that is when we go to put it in the card, we're actually gonna move it back a little bit so that we can accommodate the chick's little beak and everything so that it'll show through the window. So this isn't actually perfectly centered. It's a little bit this way, but at least now we know where the center is. Oh, so fun when that happens. Fun, 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 fun. Okay, so now we've got our card prep work done and I think we can set our card aside then because we're not gonna do anything more to this for a little while. Okay, in fact, the, the square too, you can set that aside. Okay, let's work on our ball animal. Okay, so things people ask me about the ball all the time is what weight cardstock should I use? Now, I've had pretty good success with 80 pound and 100 pound and 110 pound. Not as much success with the real thin cardstocks like the 65 pound. Um, I've made ball animals out of textured, non-textured cardstock, but I will say a smooth cardstock like a smooth 100 pound cardstock like what we're using here is like perfection for the balls. So if you have the option to find a nice smooth 100 pound cardstock, this one's from the Paper Cut. They're pop tone colors. They have all sorts of colors in that 100 pound and I just love it for the balls. Um, but that would be my favorite. But you can make it work with 80. I just wouldn't, I would probably stay away from 65. Okay, we have cut four of these. And what is so, so, so important, step one when making a ball, because you need two of them to make a ball, is that you start with identical pieces. And what I mean by that is that you look at it and you make sure that everything about those pieces is identical from where the cuts are to the holes. I mean, just put them right over the top of each other. Because what'll happen is you may have one flipped over and it looks like it lines up, but oh look, those are on different sides right there, you know? So make sure that you have all four pieces. Well, especially you need to have two pairs of twos, but you definitely, what I do is I just gonna stack all four of them up, making sure that I have identical orientation to those pieces, okay? Because that's important. And then while I got them in that stack, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a little X right here on the top of each one so that I don't actually accidentally flip one over and do it the wrong way, okay? And we're gonna cover that up with paper so it doesn't matter. Okay, and the, the side that I marked the X on is actually the outside of the ball because I can see the score lines on this piece. Okay, so that, and, and this is the side it's been die cut into. You can kind of tell that with the little rounded edges and things. So what you wanna do is you actually wanna flip this over to the non X side, because the first thing we're going to do is take these little triangular wings here and fold them inside the ball and glue them down, okay? And there's four of them on each ball half, okay? Now what that does, what these are, is they are just little reinforcing bits to make these two spokes of the ball stronger, okay? And by making those stronger, those are the ones that are going to have the rubber band stretched across them. And so these need to be strong so that it's not as easy for them to collapse or invert. So when we glue these four triangles down, we actually want to pretty much shellac them with glue. I really do love glue for this. I hope you all have it. Um, I suppose you could use a strong tape, but boy, it would take you so long to have to go in there and try and trim the tape to fit that weird shape. So glue is your best bet. I love my Lineco Neutral pH in my fine tip bottle. Okay, so you can see I put glue everywhere. It's not just about daintily pinning it down. It's about basically shellacking it down because we want that to become part of that piece, the structure of that spoke so that it'll add to the um, strength of it. Okay, so if you've just been kind of watching and you're like, oh, I'm not sure I'm ready to dive in, I'd dive in because we've got this to do on all of the ball halves. So I will try not to go too fast, but we're gonna 
do this on all four pieces. Like I said, I just hold it until it sets up and take a look at how nicely shellacked those, you know, no little pieces sticking up or anything. They're just, it's sturdy. And that's what we want. This is a thing if you watch the um, assembly videos for the ball die sets, the bitty balls, the smaller one that we're using today, or the surprise ball, the little bit larger ball die set, is I will sometimes use a like a bag clip, a chip clip or something to, or a quilting clip, or even just a paper clip would work. You know, if you're, do, if you're making, you know, a whole bunch of them and you wanted to not have to sit there and hold it, you could do that. You could, you could clip them and move on. Okay, one down. I'm going to go to the next one. Again, it's not that, that, or they fold away from the X, essentially. We're folding them to the end side of the ball. So just make sure when you fold those in, you're folding away from the thing you marked. You're folding them to the inside of the ball. Okay. So I know some of you are probably new to our brand and to my videos. This may be actually your first time watching any of my videos. I do have a YouTube channel and I do make a lot of cards. We do at least one new card video every month as part of our designer challenge, which is usually the first Wednesday of every month. And a video will go up that just uses, it's called card making with dies and just, you know, some fun card made using our die sets. But when I do those YouTube videos, of course, I film the footage, but I don't talk to the camera as I go. I just get the footage because I have two very loud dogs, which you may end up hearing sometime today because they are incorrigible. Um, okay, before I chit chat, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm going to the next one. I'm doing the same thing. I'm folding my four wings in away from the X and then gluing them on in the back. And let me get these folded away from the X and then I'll just have to do the gluing. Anyway, so when I do my videos, I don't usually narrate them live, so to speak. Like I get the footage and then I go back in and I drop any audio of my dogs barking or the doorbell ringing or me singing or the lawnmowers going or whatever. And then I do a voiceover and everybody knows they have to be quiet when vo it's voiceover time. But I can always redo the voiceover, you know, if I, if I get interrupted by a dog or something like that. So it's kind of like, I like doing these live videos, but then it's also kind of nerve wracking because I'm like, well, what if I mess up? But it's also kind of fun. And it makes you go at the speed of your students. So that's better, you know, when you do it the other way, then of course I can speed everything up and then all the pop-up peeps tell me they have to stop and start the video to try and do it with me. Okay, hopefully, I'm just basically trying not to go too fast so that whatever speed I'm doing this, that you all will be able to do the same. four are ready. Let me tell you, these fine tip bottles, we sell them in two sizes with a, uh, well, we sell it with a blue tip, which is your 20 gauge tip, which is really thin line of glue. I mean, you can get really, really tight spaces with that glue. If you want a little bit more to come out, I tend to use the yellow one a lot too, which is the 18 gauge. You get a more glue, but that Lineco neutral pH glue just goes through these bottles beautifully. And if you want to just keep them flowing, because those are needle tips, so they tend to, if you just leave that out on your table while you're working, they tend to clog up. And then you've got to take, either take them to the sink, you know, to really take them apart and clear them out. And there's a whole video that I have on the website that shows you how you can take them apart and clean them out. Or you can take the needle tips that come with them in the cap and go in and unclog them, okay? But what we have found is if you take a glass jar, this is a wee yogurt jar, and keep a damp paper towel in the bottom of it, then you can keep your bottles 
face down in that damp paper towel and it, it just keeps the glue flowing throughout your whole crafting you know day in fact i rarely recap my bottles at all because every morning i just come into my office and i just re-squirt that paper towel and make it damp again and then it's just it's just you know, it'll be like a miracle if you have ever had these things clog up and you're like oh i'm not so sure that's a beautiful way and i'm sure there's other bottles that maybe you use that you might benefit from that tip you know even if it's not our bottles okay so these are ready to go now we're going to start folding them and constructing the balls themselves well actually we're going to fold them and then we're going to decorate them and then we're going to construct the balls okay so back to our x side what we're going to do is we're going to find the six folds that are at the base of the ball and then we're going to also find the folds out on the ends for the tabs okay and all of these are going to fold away from the x so away from you the other way and this is a place where i like to tell people you don't have to be overzealous with those folds in other words i wouldn't fold it all the way down and pinch and crease or get your bone folder out it really just is i mean this is the finished amount of fold in it right so you don't really want to make that fold weaker because you can always loosen it up later by folding it some more if you needed to but it's real hard to tighten it up so just when you do these folds just go around and basically i like to say a finger fold you know just a, a finger fold to get all those tabs folded inside the ball okay so this is essentially half of the ball okay now we're going to do that again Actually, we're going to do that three more times because we're making a double stack ball. So again, out on the ends, you've got long tab, then you've got half tab, half tab, long tab, half tab, half tab. This one I can see I didn't quite fold. You do want to fold on the fold line. I mean, you don't, you don't really want crooked folds because, you know, it's a pretty precise ball where all, all the sides need to work together to stop themselves, you know, when they when they spring up so you don't want to you don't want to you mean you definitely want to fold on the lines i guess is what i'm saying you know you don't want to have too many crooked folds in it okay got two of them done all right going to the next one so again turning it over i can see the x just a finger fold on those outers okay like that and then down at the base just kind of finger fold Okay, and then the last one, looking for the X, folding away from the X, all of them fold to the back. Okay, and then to do the base. Okay, we are almost in business here to put these together, however, I actually think it's easier to do the decorating of them when you know they're still flat like this it's easy to go in there and put all of the decorator pieces on and so those of all you've die, done all your die cutting so you have all sorts of trapezoids and hexagons and you're essentially just going to use those now to cover all the sides of the chick now I know we have um, two styles of the yellow spotted paper um so i don't know for sure which one you got but everyone should have a side that has white spots now some of you may have one that has like more subtle spots and that's kind of up to you but if you have butterflies or stripes or something on the back then just do the white spots and i'll just do the white spots on this one but otherwise you can choose or i guess if you like both i mean it's your card you know mix them i don't know anyway i'm going to do the the brighter side up which is the white spots so for these tape runner would be fine it's just paper to paper but like i said i'm i tend to like using my glue and these are going to leave you a little shadow around the piece okay let's get that close so you can see so you'll actually see a little um cardstock around it and then of course you have the hexagons and we'll go ahead and just i think i had you cut four hexagons or did i only have you cut two i can't even remember i had you cut four okay good that just made it easier because then you can i can just say you know cover everything and then the one that ends up on the bottom of the chick, well, we'll just punch a hole back in it to put the brad through. Okay. So I am going to just sit here and start doing this and you all can do it with me. Putting all these pieces on the ball pieces. 
ball halves, I guess I should say. And I'm actually not sure what is best. Is best for me to just stay silent while we do this? Or is best for me to narrate it? I don't know. Well, I'll tell you the history. I guess I can do that while we're doing this, hopefully. I guess you can just tune me out or mute me if you're like, hey, I don't wanna hear you, Karen, while I'm doing this. Um, I've been a dye designer for many years and I got my start actually with Sizzix. I was a licensed designer for Sizzix. I was there for five years and that was back in the day when we didn't have the thin dyes yet. We just had the steel rule dyes, which were the thicker ones that could cut through chipboard and everything. And those were the dyes that had the ability to do score lines because the only thin dyes they had at that time were called sizzlets. And they had foam in them and you could only do a perforation line. You couldn't, at that point, I think now, of course you can do a score line in a thin dye, but at the time you could only do a perforated line. So we ended up making all the pop-up dyes out of these big steel rule thick dyes. Some of you may own some of those, they're great dyes, but boy, they, you know, they fill up your, your craft room pretty quickly when that's, you know, as your as it grows and things. So anyway. Okay, if you noticed a little break there, it was because, again, some noises in the house. Let everyone know I was recording. Anyway, we were talking about Sizzix. So that's where I got my start. And actually, we had made a pop-up ball die in a big steel rule die. It was called the pop-up ball um, for Sizzix many years ago. Don't ask me what year, because I don't remember. And um, I don't know why I never thought of bringing it back. It's It's been fun actually to go back to some of those early dyes you know when i was first getting started and you know i've learned a lot about dye design in the ensuing years because after Sizzix, i was three years with elizabeth craft designs as a licensed artist so three years of designing dyes and we were doing all wafer thin then um so yeah i had eight years of dye design under my belt as a licensed artist and then my friend tanya costanuk the owner of riley and company in 2017, she was kind of looking for a new opportunity and I was kind of done with being a licensed artist. I wanted to, oh, just be able to make more of the decisions and things. So anyway, we went into business together. We started a new company and we've been doing it ever since. But occasionally I will bring back some of those old retired dies from my earlier licensing days, you know, and I always try and kind of update them, reinvent them a little bit. So the pop-up ball, when we brought the surprise ball out last year, um, you know, it it was sized more for card makers. When when I was doing dies with Sizzix, it was actually mostly scrapbookers that were buying them and using them in scrapbook pages. So the ball was a little bit bigger. I think you had to have a six inch uh, card, but the surprise ball will fit in a five. And um, and maybe it was because of that previous, oh, there's my dogs. Okay, anyway, maybe it was because of that experience um, of having made dies more for scrapbookers that when we brought the surprise ball out, even though I think, I mean, I remember in the early um, pop-up ball days that people had made like dragons and, um, oh, characters, you know, character style them to look like a character, you know, um, famous character. But for the most part, people were using it you know, the original ball, pop-up ball, like they were putting photographs on the side. They were using it for scrapbook pages. And so when the surprise ball, when we re-released that one, I mean, I even did the packaging and I put photographs on it. I, you know, I used pictures from our recent trip to New York, recent at the time, obviously, not now recent. And, um, and then what we found is that what people were using a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot was to make these animals. And, um, so that quickly became kind of the, the popular use of the surprise ball. And then what we found is our, our fan group, the Pop-Up Peeps on Facebook. You should join us if you're not already a member of the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps, because they're a great group. They were asking, well, hey, could we have the surprise ball in a little bit smaller size so that when we stack the balls together, we could have like a smaller head, 
on a larger body, especially like if you were doing a snowman or something like that. And so we came out with the bitty ball, which is the one we're using today. And on that one, the um, decorator pieces that come in it are definitely geared more towards animal making. So um, versus the surprise ball that has like, you know, stars and hearts and circles and more generic pieces in it more for some of those other uses, the bitty ball definitely is geared with, I mean, you can still use it with photographs. You can use it for whatever you want, but I mean, you know, it, I, I knew that that's what people were wanting it for, you know, so I tried to design the included decorator pieces so that you could make animals even just with the base set. So this chick, we're actually not having to go into any of our add-on animal add-on sets to get the pieces we need to make a chick. So just using the, the pieces that are included in the base die set for this. Okay, hopefully everyone's able to do this with me. Probably gonna be the most tedious part of, I guess, the project today is just getting all these pieces put on, although it's also, eh, you know, kind of enjoyable. So we have animal add-on sets, which I will definitely show you at the end, and you can see some of the accessories and things that you could get for your bitty ball if you're new to it, you know, if this is the first time you've had one of our die sets and this is one of your first ones. We have some great additional die sets that might complement your collection nicely, and especially if you want to keep making animals so that you have more choices. Um, but these, um, these trapezoids and hexagons that come in the set, I, I know you appreciated that you got six of these because I know I appreciate it when I'm making class kits and things that you can cut basically all of the trapezoids and hexagons that you need for a ball with just one pass. But this would be the die that you would also use. Like if you were, if you wanted to cover this with photographs, you would just use this die to cut your little photographs to fit. Okay, mine are done. And so we are ready to start putting this together. And, you know, you could put the balls together and then decorate with all of those paper pieces afterwards. But I guess the reason I like doing them first, as I've kind of learned, is, you know, when we go to put our rubber band in, we're going to adjust the tension of the rubber band, you know, so that it, we get a nice spring. And that may mean adding a second rubber band or tying a knot in the rubber band or switching to a different size. So it's nice if you have at least your paper on, even though you're going to add more embellishments probably later, but if, at least if you have your base paper on, then you're accounting for that weight when you adjust the tension of the rubber band before you've sealed it all together. So that's why I like to do it this way. And it's just easier. You know, you can just lay everything flat and put all your decorator pieces on. Okay, so we just need two of them to get started. And what we're going to do is we are going to look for one of those full tab sides that has a cut and a hole. And we are going to, oops, drop that. We are going to glue those two together so that the tabs are inside the ball and the cuts and the holes line up. So first thing you have to do is figure out if to make sure that you have mirror image pieces like this where, the, where when you kiss connection glue it together that the hole and the cut is going to line up on both sides. Now here's what would happen if you had it wrong. If you had this side, as you see, the holes will line up when you kiss connection but not the cuts and we have to have the cuts lined up so that we can get the rubber band in later. So you just have to make sure that you're choosing ones where the cut and the, the hole line up. And then what you do is you coat that with a good strong glue. I do like glue for this, not gonna lie, this one's probably not tape runner country here. We need something strong, okay? Then you're gonna take that side where the cut and the slit line up and kiss connection them together. So what do I mean by kiss? It's kind of like they're face to face. And then here on the outside, as you're pinching inside, you can look and make sure that your corners line up. Inside, you'll see that all three edges line up. You can still get through that, you know, slit into that hole. So, you, do, you know, you want to take your time to make sure that you have it lined up really nicely. Okay, the nicer that you connect these tabs around the ball, the straighter you make them, the more precise you are, the better your ball will spring up. Um, and the less likely you will to have like a side collapse inward into the ball because they all have to kind of support their neighbor, right, when they pop up. So 
you know, you want to have those connections straight because, you know, what's keeping those from collapsing in is that they, they catch on their neighbor. So we want to make sure we have nice crisp folds all the way around. Okay. So now we've got those two connected and now we're going to go around and we're going to connect half of the ball until we get to the other kiss connection on the other side. And this is where you have to decide which way you're going, okay? You don't want to go in the direction of the cut because if we connect this side next, then it's going to be impossible to get in there and put the rubber band in. So we want to go in the direction away from the cut, okay? So even if you want to, you don't have to put a pen mark there, but if you wanted to, you could. It'll be inside so you'll never see it. So what that means is I'm going to connect this half tab these two sides together, then these two sides together, and then I'll work my way around to the other kiss connection. Okay, so what do I mean by that? All right, here's the next one, and it's half tabs, okay? Half tabs do not, or they are not a kiss connection. They do not attach to each other. Look how that wouldn't look right at all. They actually attach to the other half of the ball. So what happens is you coat each of them with adhesive, and you they basically sit side by side in there, where they're connecting each half together. That's why that first step that we did where we made sure that every piece was identical when we started is so important because if you didn't, if you had one flipped over, this is where you would you'd figure it out because you'd end up with tabs that line up instead of sit side by side. And um, that's not an easy fix. That's like a start over situation there. So you definitely wanna always make sure that you start from identical pieces. Okay, so I've got glue on both half tabs, then I'm going to let them sit next to each other. And I like to do it like this, where I flatten it and I look at my corners and that this is nice and straight. Okay, and I give it a good pinch. Okay, and let's see if we can see inside the ball how that looks. Uh, a little hard with yellow cardstock. You know what I'll do? I'll trace it with my pen so you can see. Okay inside see what's happened the half tab from one has connected to the other okay all right now we're going to go and do the next one and that's exactly the same so lather rinse and repeat glue on both half tabs okay and then we sit them side by side flatten make sure that our corners are all lined up this is why i like dries clear glue so that if it gets a little squished out you know you can all right and that after we get those two then we've come around now we've got our other kiss connection so the kiss connections with the cuts and the holes they they kiss they glue to each other okay like this and then again i just make sure that if my corners on the outside match up perfectly, then it should do all the matching up on the inside for me, you know, where it's, those two tabs are connected. Okay, now we've gone enough around the ball where we should have this. I'm gonna give everybody a second to catch up while I dive into my baggie for some rubber bands here. Okay, you know what, I think I'm gonna dump all this stuff out. stuck between my, my magnets here. Okay. You know, I'm just going to leave my pile over here. Okay. I believe what we gave you in your kit was four number 12s and two number 14. So there's two that are just a little bit longer. We're not going to use those number 14s unless we have to. Um, usually the number 12s are fine. But the important thing about the number 12 is that it's a soft stretch rubber band. If it's if it's a tight rubber band, then probably a 12 is too thin. I mean, or it's too um, small. So um, that's the thing about rubber bands. I mean, most for the most part, you can probably just go to the junk drawer and dig around and find a, a rubber band that will work. Um, and on the assembly video for the balls, I go over kind of in great detail how you can check and see. Um, but I've had really good success with the Pale Crepe Gold number 12 soft stretch rubber bands, which um, we'll put in the description box as well. 
where that uh, where you can get those. I just buy them on Amazon, and um, they seem to work well for both the bitty ball and the surprise ball. Okay, so how do they work? Well, you slide a rubber band through the cut until it's in the hole on one side, and then on the other side. Okay. All right. So that's what you should see, the rubber band stretch across. And then, then you give it a thwap test, okay? Which is you press it and you see how well it springs back. This one's actually springing back pretty well, but I almost think it could be, it's my, it may be worth trying a second rubber band in there to see if I can get it even, if I can get more crisp thwap without inverting any side, without making it too tight. Um, so in the assembly videos, I say, oh, well, you can take this out and tie a knot in it. But what I found is sometimes that's hard for fingers to get in there and get it back out again. And um, so why not just add a second rubber band and see what happens? Because you can always take it out if it's too tight. Okay, so this is close to being too tight because it's, it's sneaking this side in a little bit, but that will probably be repaired by these sides being connected. So it's not inverting. So it's, it's, it's coming kind of close to vertical, but it's not inverting, but oh, I bet you I've got a beautiful thwap. I do, it's gorgeous. So if you've got what I've got with two rubber bands in there, then you're set to continue. If you feel like it's, if, if any side if caves in, like all the way in, like it's inverted, then it's too much. You gotta take one of them out and just go with the one. But uh, try it with two and see if you can, if it'll handle it, you know? Um, or for instance, maybe it can handle two number 12s, but maybe it could handle a 12 and a 14, which is a little bit longer. So you can always kind of experiment with that. Um, I've been trying to see if maybe having the two rubber bands in each ball might make them a little less susceptible to how, how stretched out they get when you've just got your, your card stored for a long time flat. And then, you know, it is possible that you open it up and, um, you know, your, your ball just kind of lethargically comes up or it has a lot of gaps and stuff in it because it's been stored flat. What I always tell people is, you know, store your cards flat after you make them great, but then just before you give it to somebody or mail it, open it up, let it pop up, you know, and then just let it sit for half a day. And you, what you'll find is that it will, it will, um, get tight again. Like you'll just see, you'll come back after a little while and you won't see any gaps in it and it'll tighten back up again. So the rubber bands do get stretched out if they're flattened and just left flat for a long period of time, but they also recover. But like this one, it only has a single rubber band in each ball. And so I've been kind of trying whether having two might make it a little less susceptible to that. So anyway, to your liking, it'll work with one. If you want to save your extra rubber bands for other projects, you could do that. Um, but Try it with two if it'll take two. Okay, mine, mine was able to take two. So now what I'm going to do is finish out the ball. But this is the shot you have to get that rubber band right, okay? Because um, it's hard to get in there. I mean, you pretty much have to take some undo and get a side open to get in there and repair it or whatever. Um, I think sometimes the peeps have said that they, they like to staple or seal that little slit, you know, so that the bands can't come out. I've never had one come out, but I, some people have said that just in... You know, they like to, I guess they would take maybe a, you see, like a little small stapler or something in there or a little piece of tape. Um, I don't do that, but you can. You can. Okay, so now you've got some resistance on your last two things, so you're going to have to kind of hold it while you put your glue on and then get your half taps put together. Okay, and I can tell you already that this one is going to be the head of the chick. Well, I guess I could still do it. I didn't punch the hole back in it. Well, we could make this the bottom of the chick. You know, we can because I haven't glued. All you have to do to make whichever one you want to make the bottom, you have to get a brad in. So then we've covered it with the hexagon. So you have to go in there before you've sealed your ball up with a paper piercer and get, oh, see, that's close to that thing wanting to invert. Ooh, that makes me a little nervous. Yeah, it'll be, you know what I'm wondering about? Maybe taking out my 12 and putting in my 14. I don't I don't like it when they invert that's no fun that just means it's too tight if it inverts it's too tight let me take one out here and put that number 14 in so let's see get it back out where it started I'm gonna try that instead of the two number 12s so I think my original I have two number 12s in each one 
but like I said, this is the time for experimenting. Is when the ball is still open. Okay, let me see if I can get that into the hole there. You get it? Okay, I do. I think it'll be fine. That's it. Yeah, it'll be fine. Um, okay, so since I decided this is going to be the base, then I need to find my magnets because that's where my brad's going to be stuck to. Probably, yeah, on the back of my other card. Okay, so we just want the brad. And the brad needs to go through that hole in the base and then open up like this. Okay, so you have to do that on one of them. Okay, now is my glue still wet from those two that I... That glue on it is. Okay, sorry, I got a little off script there. Okay, and then we're gonna do this one. Okay, final half tab. And again, try to make sure that you get it nice and straight, that the corners are lined up, that you don't have a crooked connection. Because what happens when you have a crooked connection is this side doesn't stop, you know, that rubber band side, it, you know, it can just go straight on by it because it's all like wonky or whatever, but this one's working good. Okay, there we have, we have the base of our chick. Oh, that's so exciting, so cute. Okay, all right, guess what? We get to do it all again with our second set. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, we will not need our paper piercer for this because we don't need a brad at the top. Now you can, you could, you can attach the head to the body on a brad and then the head spins independently of the body, but I usually don't. I just glue the, the head to the base. So, okay, moving on, let's do another one. We're gonna do the exact same thing. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta find two of the long tabs where a kiss connection will line up both the hole and the cut. Okay, well, that's step one. Again, I like glue for this. Okay. And again, just taking my time to make sure that I have a good connection where everything lines up, including when the ball is closed, you know, that these corners line up. Okay, then I have to decide which way I'm going to travel around the ball connecting the half tabs. And again, I have to have to move away from the cut one with the cut. So I have to go the other direction. So if the cut's over here, I gotta go this way. Okay, then I go to the next one. These are half tabs. So half tabs. Connect to the other side. Like this. Okay. Then another half tab. Okay, those sit side by side, making sure that everything lines up. Okay, and then we've worked our way around to the other kiss connection. This one we coat the entire tab with adhesive. Make sure our corners are lined up. Okay, so now we're ready for rubber bands. This one does not need a brad in it, so we don't have to do any hole punching or anything. I'm going to start with one number 12. See how it does. I mean, most of the time a single is fine too. You can see that's giving you a good spring back right there. So maybe you're just good with one, you know, it's fine. You don't have to put two in there that's up to you. And I'm halfway wondering about not because, well, what if we did the same combination that I did last time, which was a 12 and a 14? You know what, too? You could, let's say you, you made it a little too tight, you know, you got it together and then a side started inverting. Um, 
boy, it, you could, I mean, I hate to say it, but you could go in there and snip one, you know what I mean? And take it out of there if you had to. I guess I probably shouldn't say that. That'd be some pretty delicate surgery, but you could if you had to. Um, okay, so I'm going to use that 12 and 14 again. But again, a number 12 was enough, so if you wanted to save your extra rubber bands and just use one, that's fine. I was, I was just going for a real crisp thwap. Okay, so then half tab, then half tab again. Okay, how we go? Oh, beautiful. Look at how nice. They're just fun. You could keep one on the table as a stress ball. I mean, I have actually had them sometimes just on my desk and I just come in and I don't know why. It's just fun to, to do that with them. Uh, okay, cool. We have two bitty balls ready for stacking. Okay, I'm gonna give you guys a second in case you're still working on that to kind of catch up. I don't, I'm not gonna move on just yet. I thought I would actually show you maybe the difference. Let's see if I can find, I have some animals. You know, I'll do the hippo because the hippos. Okay, talking about ball size. While well, you guys are there, I'll give you just a second to get your balls finished up there um, before we move on. So here's the difference in size. So this is the surprise ball on the bottom, which is the bigger one. And then this is the bitty ball that we're using today, the smaller one for the head. So this is one of our animal add-on set. That's animal add-ons three that will make a hippo, an elephant, and a giraffe. And you kind of already saw the elephant. And I just for a moment showed the giraffe. Okay, but if you, you with all the animals, you have the choice to make them, you know, with either size ball on the top or bottom. Um, oh, so, and it's, so this is the difference if you had Biddy Biddy, and this is Biddy Surprise. So there's, a, I mean, there's about 20% difference in size, but it's, it's all like 20% everywhere, you know, so it's a pretty fair difference. I mean, you can see the difference in height. Well, I don't know if you can see the difference in height. angle, But, you know, like if you wanted to do mamas and babies or something and you had both, you know, you'd be able to do um, a whole family or whatever if you wanted to. Or maybe you'd use the surprise and the surprise, you know, have fun with it. So that's the difference in size. Um, and these just haven't gone into a card yet. I mean, so it is kind of fun, too, if you just wanted to send that animal. You know, maybe you've got a little, oh, a little grandchild or something small that it's just, would just, you know, they care less about the card. Or they just want something to play with or whatever. You could just flatten that, throw that in the envelope. They pull it out and it pops up and then, you know. So they don't have to go in cards. And in that case, you wouldn't necessarily need a Brad at all. Uh, okay, I'm going to assume that people are kind of caught up and ready to put this thing together. Now, the first thing, that the other things you're seeing on all of these, they're they're glued where it's flat face front to flat face place. They're glued the same way, like the balls are, except for I think the cat. Well, the cat, I do it pointy nose and pointy belly. And here the giraffe is flat face and flat belly. But what I do on the chick is I do flat face, pointy belly. So you have that option as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue the one that has the brad is the, the bottom. Okay, so what I would do is I would go around and find your favorite, like this is my least favorite because I really didn't do a great job on that one, which I can kind of see in that gap. So I'm going to choose this face because these three are kind of the prettiest and it's going to be pointy belly. So I'm going to choose right here. I think this is my favorite point, right? So this one's probably my least favorite because I have a little bit of a crooked connection. So this is my, my most favorite. So that's going to be the point of the belly. And then on this one, I generally find that the flat face that I like the best is the one where the full tabs were because you just get that kind of nice seam. So you got two choices. There's this one and this one. I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm just telling you my favorite. So um, I'm going to choose this flat face with this pointy belly. And I'm gonna just go ahead and add my glue all over this. And then I think, you know, you kind of set it on there and then if you flatten it, now you can twist that top to where, see if I can show you. This is what I look at. That basically see how even that is all the way around. I'm spanning and I have e even evenness on that and then when it pops up you'll have flat face front pointy belly okay oh she is coming together so nicely okay let me turn this this way so this is kind of actually a good uh, 
showing of the different things too. Okay, so pieces that you pre-cut. I had you cut some ear centers and then use the little black circles out of the bitty ball to make the eyes, okay? So those are gonna go on and then we're going to use the largest heart out of the set for the beak. Okay, so let's put this down here so you can kind of see the placement. Uh, where are we going to do that? We need something to prop that. What do you want to rest your head against, a little chick? Nope, that's a little too tall. I mean, there are plenty of things around this desk. I should be able to find something for that chick to rest on. There we go. There, yeah, that's what I was looking to do. Uh, okay, so let's put... Like what I think looks kind of cute is to have the beak overlap the eyes just a little bit. So if I put, ooh, that's a little sloppy there, dry as clear glue. If I put eye on like this, maybe at a little kind of outward angle, and then this eye on like this, okay. So it's kind of, you know, like that. Then I can put, I would only want the adhesive at the top part of the heart then. So I'm going to let the beak hang off the edge. So I don't want adhesive where it's hanging off the edge. So something like this. Okay, and then you can always flatten it. And then you'll be able to give a good press to your pieces. Okay. Okay, for the feet of our chick, we're going to use the smaller hearts. Okay, and I'm trying to remember where I put them. Like that. So in this case, we're going to use the tip of the heart is going to get the adhesive. So the tip of the heart, I'll do one and then the other. And then let's have it stick out uh, something like that maybe. It's to your liking. I mean, there's nothing... There's nothing magical about my placement. It's wherever you think it looks the best. And then just kind of match it on the other side. Okay, cute. And again, you can always give things good squishes in the flat position. That's a little easier than pushing against the ball, you know, when it's upward. Um, okay, then we have the wings. So I had you cut those. The bitty ball has these animal arms, essentially arms or wings. Okay, and when you use them with the skinny part glued on, then they become the arms that you would use for a dog or a bear or a cat or a fox or a pig. Okay, so you use those, those are sort of the universal animal arms. But if you want to use them as a wing, you actually connect the larger end to the animal and then the, the shorter end or the thinner end sticks out to be the wing. So you can see what I've done here. I actually glued them inside the ball like that. Okay, so what you would do is you would take your adhesive on the front of the larger end of the piece and then right in here, it's got to be above the fold so that it can, you know, it can't span the fold or else it won't fold down flat. And it can go out at whatever angle you think is pleasing and maybe it'd be easier to flatten that. Maybe it, uh, maybe it comes out a little bit, something like this. Let's see. Yeah, that's nice. So in the closed position, it, you know, almost just kind of travels a little bit outside the, the thing. Now, now comes the fun part of trying to match it on the other side. Okay, let's see. Put that in a little bit like that. It was kind of traveling out a little bit wider than the ball. Oh, I have all sorts of loose glue here. Okay. Mm, not terrible, but not great. Let's see if I can move it in just a little bit. I think I put it right back in the exact same spot. I feel like it wants to be there. Okay, that's better. Okay. Not cute. Okay, and then the last thing before, because we haven't put our little chicks together, because we're going to have a little chick hanging out on the wing, but there's the bow tie. So the bitty ball comes with the bow tie, and if you were doing a flat face body, like say with this hippo, well then you can just glue it right on that flat face, but we have a pointy belly. So we need to attach it here 
but then of course this is going to flatten and get wider. So what I think the easiest to do is to actually fold the bow up the middle so that it has a little bit of a mountain shape to it like this, okay? And then we're actually going to attach it to the, um, it's good to attach it when it's closed because then, and just the tails, because then it can just mountain up as it, oh, you know what, let me just show you. Let me see if I close, clip, clip my thing down. Okay, if I only put the adhesive on the outer tails, like this, okay, and I've got it folded kind of up the middle, then I flatten it out and attach it so it spans across the the seam. I know you can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to show you in just a second here. Okay, it spans. Ooh, oh, come on. Okay, oh my goodness. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Like it's gonna it's gonna pick up if you put it in the uh closed position like this where it spans the gap, okay, then it will use that little fold you put in it to be able to come together when he pops up. Oh, that made sense. Okay. So, because you almost have to attach it just by the tails and not by everything else so that they can still move around as it opens. Okay, something like that. Hope that made sense. Okay, so we have our little chick, pop-up chick done, and now we need to work on the little chicks that are going to go on the front of our card as well as hanging out on the big chick's wing. There. Okay, so these are from our spring animal die set, and I had you die cut two chicks. This is where a quick stick can be helpful, and two sets of feet, and two little beaks. The wigs, the beaks, and the um, feet die cut at the same time. They're on the same die. Okay, so, and then I had you stencil the little eyes on. All right, so for putting these together. We just need a dot of glue where the beak will go. Okay. And if you're wondering on the beaks which way is up, I have the chick kind of smiling. I mean, the, I guess the pointier end would be up because then that makes the little crease cut in it look more like a smile. Okay. And again, using a quick stick for this. It's very helpful when you're talking about small pieces. Now, one of the things when you did the prep work on this, I was mentioning about the sp spring animals is there's actually a stencil feature for the beak as well. If you're doing a whole bunch of them and you don't want to have to deal with little tiny beaks gluing on, you can just use an orange pen through the um, through the die. So that's we do try to use stencil features for our small animals where we can. OK, so then on the legs, they just, as you would imagine, just glue underneath the chick. Oops, give it a second to dry. Okay, now the chick, the spring animal set that has the chick and the bunny doesn't actually come with a little bow, but I wanted our chicks to have a bow since our big chick did. So in our chicken, pig, and lamb set, which is another one of our animal sets, there is a little bow for the lamb. And of course that can be used on any animal. So, I mean, if you have that set. That wasn't one of the required dies, so those were actually just cut for you out of the teal color, but that's the die set we used to, um, to get those tiny little bows that would fit the small chick. But definitely look to those other, if you start collecting any of our animal dies, maybe this is your first set, the spring animals, but there are a lot of different animal sets and there are little accessories in each set that might cross, you know, animal lines, so to speak, and work with some of the others. Okay, so here's our two bow-tied little chicks. One of them is going to perch on the wing of our big chick, okay? So you can kind of, I think it's cute if you find a spot where the actual legs will stick out the back as well. And I just hooked the wings over the top. And oh, that's kind of cute. I didn't think of it when I glued my bow down, but maybe it would be cute to have, oh, apparently I did on the other one, to have the bow going to the front of the wing as well. I don't know, I might have glued mine down too hard 
Oh, what about the other one? Didn't even think of that. Having the bow extend over the wing might be cute too. So if you can get one of them up a little bit, you could do that. So that it's wings and bow kind of coming to the front of the wing. I mean, it wouldn't end the world if you couldn't. And then I probably wouldn't rely on just that to hold it on there. Once you have a spot you like, I would go in there and add some glue to the belly of the chick, the little chick, and actually make it permanent. Okay. Now, what we did for the chick for the front of the card is I kind of felt like it needed a little, you know, definition to it. So what we did is we cut, a, or had you cut, I guess, right, had you cut, this was one of the required dies, a chick out of black and a pair of legs out of black. Now these are the exact same size, so they're not going to be a shadow layer, but you can make them kind of a, a shadow layer by doing two things. Okay, so for the, the um, legs, what you can do is just glue it behind, but a little lower than the chick itself, because then it'll basically make a drop shadow lower, okay? And then what I did on this one is I took my scissors and, get my scissors, cut it up the middle vertically. Okay, so I have two half chicks now. And then I, that way I could slide it to the side and basically get a little shadow to the side. So, you know, optional, but just since it's gonna be on the front of the card, thought it needed a little definition. Okay. Let's see if you can see that. Okay, and then the last one would go on the other side, and again, just kicking it out a little bit. It just has a little bit of extra definition. Okay. All right, so that's the one for the front. And in fact, what we can do is we can go ahead and get the front greeting put together now. Okay, so you need to find all your letters. Okay, don't freak out that you don't have an I because the, um, the chick is the I for chicken. Okay, so let's look at the original here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit the word chicken across that green strip. And as you see, the letters are probably gonna have to be pretty close together, even touching. So you might wanna, you know, like you see with the K and the E and the N, I kind of did a little cattywampus thing. And then the chick is going to be the I. Okay, all right. So, I mean, you could like, you know, kind of lay them on there and see the location where it seems to fit the best. Yeah, that's gonna be good. Okay, so just start gluing those down on your thing. I do like that black shiny cardstock. That's from the paper cut. And they just have wonderful card stocks. In fact, all of the card stock in your kit is from the paper cut. And like I said, they're 100 pound smooth pop tone card stock for the ball dies is tremendous. Works wonderfully. So maybe you have a local store that carries the paper cut or maybe you could ask them to. Or they do have a website if you have, or unfortunately, maybe no local stores in your area, but definitely see if your local store can order it for you. Then you can kind of buy it just which sheets you need. Okay. Oh, I might have gone a little over, over wampus there on my K. Let's see if I can. Okay. This. This. And does that leave me a perfect chick size opening? It sure does. Oh, oops. I need a, um, where's my hand out? Where's my hand out? Get that a good press. Okay. 
and then I would only want adhesive on the chick where it's going to, I say as I put too much adhesive on it, where it's going to touch the green cardstock since the rest of it's going to be basically visible on the inside of the card. Um, yeah. Well, not too much because that's where we're going to put the, um, that's the reason that we put the little white trap or hexagon inside is because it kind of disguises the bits of the chick that stick out and also gives you a place to write a personal greeting. So that was kind of the thought process of that. Okay, so now we have chicken. And then let's go over here to our card. I got so confused. I was like, I thought I put the paper in. I did. This is not glued down very well though. That's right, because I only used adhesive in the corners. That's why. Oh, look, I didn't even get my window all the way up. See? And I don't even care. It's going to be a lovely card. That's Nobody's going to get this card and go, well, you didn't get your transparency window all the way to the edge. No one, no one, no one. Okay, we might want to go ahead and put our, our title and everything on the front now, and then we can, um, because then we don't have the, the chicken in there yet causing any resistance to it. So for putting this on the card, I basically just centered it on my circle. That's kind of up to you. Well, did I? Might be a little, little higher than, than I guess it is a little higher than center. Maybe something like, that, but not much. I mean, something like this maybe. And then I would only use your adhesive out here on the edges, and not any where it's going to go across the transparency. So you don't have unsightly glue visible through your your thing. So maybe something like this. Okay. Remember that's bottom fold, top flap, unless you're making a creative choice versus like if you put it, you know, anyway, that's, that's how it was designed. Okay, then let's talk about the just an N part of your greeting. So we actually cut these for you out of our word set 10, which is um, just sitting here thinking of you. So the IN is actually from the word sitting. We just took the IN out of it. So, um, that's where that came from. And then what we're going to do is we're going to glue the green one over the black one so that we have a little drop shadow to it. So when you do a drop shadow, you just kind of go a little diagonal in one direction. So I'm going to have my drop shadow going lower right. So I would glue my green one over my black one so that the black sticks out kind of lower right. So basically just slightly diagonal. Okay, and then I just do the same thing with this one. And if you have any pieces and parts in your in your in your S or your J. I guess the J has a little pieces has a hole in it too. Okay. This is where you really see the 20 gauge. Ooh, what did I just do with that? I dropped it. It has gone missing. It's so funny when I do these videos because I'm sure someone's like looking at this going, I see it, it's right there. And I can't see it. Okay, so I've got to locate my missing just on me sorry that's why there it is okay anyway 20 gauge glue 20 gauge glue lets you do a real thin line so that's perfect for our little word sets so i mean but you could do it with the yellow as well i just find the blue is even easier oh i have pieces and parts in my black one too that i need to get out of there Okay, and then again, I'm just going to leave a little drop shadow on that word. Okay, so now we're going to put just up here. And what I found is that I could put adhesive on J, U, and the upper part of the S, and then I just went ahead and let the, the T hang on the transparency, or did I? Maybe I did glue it down, I can't remember. I may have glued it down. It looks like it's glued down. I mean, if you have a dry clear glue, it will glue. It may be a little more sparing on the part that's going to hit the transparency. Or you can do like this, where you um, kind of take your finger and smooth it out a little bit so it's not clumpy. All right, so does that overlap my... Mine didn't. Okay. I guess it doesn't matter. It might look kind of nice overlapping into the... Thing a little bit. That's to you, to your liking. 
And then the N can mostly go on the green below over here. Doesn't have to hit too much of the transparency at all. I don't know on my original if I, yeah, on my original it does just a little. Just a little. Okay. Just chicken in. This is coming together. Okay, so now we can go ahead and put our uh, chick, flatten our chick out and put it in the card and kind of figure out where we think we need to move that hole. Well, we haven't done the hole yet, but um, see, because you want to be able to see the beak in the finished card. So see, that isn't perfectly centered because if it was perfectly centered, this edge would be right to here, okay? So what that means is however far up we go like this, we just kind of have to eye that and we say, oh, okay, that's about a quarter of an inch or so. And we need to move our pen line back accordingly so that when we punch the hole for our brad, we're giving room for that beak to be visible through the, um, through the window. But here's what's so nice about this. You can change your mind. I mean, you can give it a try and that hole is going to be up underneath the chick and we're going to put a piece of paper on the back. So let's say you had five holes punched in the, to get the perfect location. It would be fine. No one will ever see the extra holes. So when you go to put this in, this is important. You have to keep your, um, your chick closed up because as soon as you open those brad prongs if you let this go the brad will fall out inside the animal and it's really hard to put it back in and there are solutions that we could come up with but it's easier if you just keep it collapsed until you get the brad through and then open it on the back side okay awesome. and then see now to, you don't want it to be so tight that you can't spin it so you may have to loosen it a little bit if you need to but don't mind spinning just fine Okay, so let's see how we did on location. Does it stay in the card? That's important. Yeah, it does. Can I see the beak through the window? Yep. Can I close it? Eh, kind of barely. I almost want to move it down just a little bit. In fact, I think I will. That'll give you a little extra time in case you're catching up. I'm actually going to move mine. Okay, so important. When we, when we do brad prongs, we keep the chick collapsed. And then I'm going to open those back up for safety. Okay, I decided that I went a little too far back on mine, so I'm gonna split the difference. Put myself a new hole. About right there. Make sure I'm going through the right one. Okay, and then I'll open it up on the back. Still spins lovely. Okay, I like that better. It just makes it a little easier to close the card because I didn't get that double ball like so close to the fold at the top, but I can still see the beak. So I just made sure the beak was just kind of just skimming the edge there. Okay, so once you get the chick in in a location that you like, that you can still close the card, that you can see it through the window the way you like it, then you can go ahead and add your cardstock to the back. So you have a square of cardstock for the back. I think that is cut to the exact size of the back of that card. And if you find that you want to, I mean, I tend to like to trim them down a little bit. I did not tell you to have a trimmer in class today. So you could use your scissors since it's just for the back. But if you do have access to your trimmer, I might just suggest taking a smidge off, you know, so that it's just easier to get that onto the back of your card without it overlapping an edge. Because it's just for strength and for covering your brad prongs. That's all it's for. So, and you could, you know, you really could do that with a pair of scissors. Um, okay, let me see if I can close. Uh, so, you know, I wouldn't put adhesive where your brad is, even though the chick can spin on the brad, even if the brad was stationary, I would just leave that room to spin in there. So I would do something like this, where you stick your adhesive around the perimeter and leave an area in the middle for spinning. Okay. It'll just make it a little easier to get it on there because we trimmed just a smidge off. So it'll come almost to two, but not quite to the edges. Okay, we are getting so close to having this done. 
Okay, the reason I like to do everything else before I put my magnets in is so that it, you are accounting for every bit of weight in this card, including the back and how stiff that is and stuff. So I wouldn't want to put my magnets in until I've got the animal in and everything. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's talk about magnets. So we get them from K and J Magnetics. I think I'm going to put that in the description box below this uh, thing, but in case it's not there, just so you know. So what we did is we've given you four of the D401 N40, N52s, which are a quarter of an inch. Those are the ones I use the most. But then I also get a few of the D501 N52s, which are 5 sixteenths of an inch. Um, and we originally had just planned to give you the four uh, D401s, but because we use such heavy cardstock on the card and because I doubled up my rubber band so I have a really, really tight spring, I kind of felt like four magnets wasn't, it was, it was, it was coming open too easily. So uh, Tanya and I decided to give you two of the bigger one, but we're going to try and make this work with just four magnets and you only have to use the other two if it won't hold together, okay? So start with your two biggest ones, the D uh, 501 N52s, okay? And where these are going to go, this is a great time. I didn't tell you to bring any, but hopefully maybe if you're in your craft room, you've got some handy. Boy, a little um, miniature glue dot would be perfect for this. Okay, here's what you do. You take that thing and you put it on a mini glue dot so it's sticky. And where we're gonna put these is in these corners inside the card out here. Okay, where in the corner? Take a look at mine. We're gonna cover those up later on with some flowers. Okay, you're not gonna see them as much because we're gonna put the flowers on. So what I'm doing is just kind of in the corner somewhere, but this is where we're gonna check. We may have to move them, okay? So don't get too attached to that location, pun intended, because what we're going to do is we're going to figure out if we can get magnets inside this flap and not have it be right over the fold, right? So how do we decide that? Now you need to grab two of your N401s, the smaller one, and we're gonna let one stick to each of those ones on the inside. So right now these are just stuck because there's a magnet on the other side, okay? Then we open this flap up and we, we come down and we look, can we see any bit of that magnet over the fold? We can't. So that's a good spot. Now, if you could, then that means that this magnet inside is too far down this way. You'd have to go a little further out to the edge. So it would have to go this way. So you would just peel it up. Remember, you're gonna put a flower over the top of it, so it doesn't matter. Put it a little bit this way, okay? But if you've got a location where this can pick it up and it's not over the fold, then you're good, okay? So if you do have any kind of clip or paper clip to hold your card closed, that can be helpful. Okay, so here's what you do. You take your glue dot now, and we're gonna stick it on top of that magnet that's sitting there. I'm not trying to stick it down in that location, we're trying to make it sticky on top. Okay. So put a little glue dot on each of those magnets, okay. Then with this opened up, because we're trying to get it to the inside, we're going to um, close the flap, okay and it's gonna pick up those magnets and move them inside here in the right location. And then we'll be able to seal it closed. Now let's not seal it closed yet because we need to check it. We need to see whether that's enough strength to hold that closed. It feels like it's not. It feels like we're gonna to have to add the other magnet. Okay, we've got our other two magnets. Well, I guess it doesn't matter where we add them. Let's see if we add them here, if that does it. I kind of have a feeling like my, there, it does. So I think if you only used one rubber band in each of your balls, it would probably be enough to do just the four. Um, or you'd have to use like thinner cardstock, or like in my case, I kind of have a feeling like maybe I'd be better even if I'd moved my chick down a little further, you know, because I've got it really close to that edge, you know, inside the card, but six is holding. So unfortunately on mine, I had to use all all six of them, but of course, also when you put it in the um, envelope, that's gonna hold it closed as well. But yeah, I'm gonna need all six on mine. So I was hoping that you guys would get by with just the four, but so you'd have two left over. Um, 
but yeah, it's gonna need all six, sorry. Okay, so I put the extra two in here. If you didn't want that flap that thick, I suppose, but then you could use them. I guess it doesn't really much matter if they're attached there or if they're attached here. I wonder if there's any difference in how it feels. You know what, I think I, I think it's stronger. I don't know why, I guess it works either way. I feel like it's stronger. I get a stronger pull if it's if it's two inside the flap, two smalls inside the flap, and then big ones down here. I wonder too. Half a mind to try to move this one. This one feels a little stronger because it's closer to the fold right here. So I almost want to move this one closer to the fold, which means I'll have to move my other magnet too. Okay, let's see if I can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I think if you can get them close to the fold, that's the best. Or, yeah, I can feel the difference. Okay, so the secret of magnet placement seems to be get them close to the fold. So I still think it's easier to um, place these two first. Um, because it's hard to do that trick where you let it pick it up because it has to be under here. Whereas this, you know what I mean? It's hard to do the thing where you let it sit on top and then you pick it up with a glue dot um, without. But boy, it's it's holding wonderfully, wonderfully like that. But it's when you add this double thick of the 100 pound cardstock. That's, that's what did it. Okay, so after you get in a spot where you're, you're probably gonna need all six magnets, um, then you can seal this closed. Okay, moment of truth. Yep, it's holding. We have left to do we're almost done with our card is just cover our magnets on the inside we're going to use some little charms um, from our backyard charms set and so these have been pre-cut for you the reason they have the little hole at the top is because this is actually a charm Let's see if i have that set handy. i don't know if i have the set handy but i have my my thing so the way that our charms work is they're meant to kind of be able to be used as both a dangling charm. That's why they all have the little holes at the top so that you can dangle them off the pop-ups and things or, you know. Um, but if you don't want to use them as charms, you just want to use them as standalone evidence or evidence elements, then you just take your scissors and cut off the hole at the top. So really they're, you know, they're meant for both. And we have them in lots of different styles of charms. Um, this isn't even all of them. I haven't had a chance to update my, my thing with the backyard charms yet. But, you know, fun little cocktails and robots and things like that. So our embellishments are often charm sets. So when you don't want to use them as a charm, which in this case we're just going to use these as flowers, then I can just trim off the little hole at the top of each one. What we're going to use with the yellow flower is the green, or green, oh my goodness, until I've been teaching for two hours. So the brown, this is brown piece that is from the set that's sized to fit it perfectly. And then on the pink flower, you would normally use the stencil feature in the die to add your center because I figured most times people will be adding a rhinestone or something. What I had you all do was just cut a white circle from the bitty ball set, the same one as like we use for the eyeballs and that can be used as a flower center. I would not suggest a rhinestone or anything in this card. Let's keep everything flat so that, um, those magnets can do their work. We're not adding more additional layers and things that the magnets have to fight against. Okay, so for putting those on, I'm probably still gonna stick with my glue dots. Put one on top of my magnet. I did pink flower on the right, but I don't know why. I mean, it wouldn't matter. Yellow flower on the left. And like I say, those are just to cover the magnets, so wherever you can make them fit. And then one, oh, let me show you that. One piece left and it's just the hexagon that we're using as a place to write a personal greeting. And if you hit it over where the chick is, then it will mostly cover, you know, like it won't look like chick feet at least, you know, just like a little 
little toes sticking up right there. And so for this one, I would probably, since you're going on a transparency, I would use um, dry adhesive, but I wouldn't go any wider than the green. So I wouldn't get all the way out to the edges because then that'll be, that adhesive would be viewable on the front. So I would stick with your adhesive just in the green area here. I'll just, I don't, know why I'm, I don't know why I'm not doing that on the table. Just in the center kind of. And then get that white uh, hexagon on. And then like I say, that's the place that you can sign it. But it's kind of not seen in the um, clothes. Oh, come on. Don't, don't not close on me. I've got my, there we go. <laughs> Scared me. Uh, so there we go. We did it. We made our just chicken in card, double stacked chick card. And that was the leftover white one because we cut a set. And these are the hangles, which we don't need. Okay. So how do you mail this? You need a five by seven envelope. Okay, so that will fit, since it's a five by five card, you can mail it in a five by seven envelope. Now I will say that's going to be probably wider than the quarter of an inch allowance. I mean, it's close, but it's probably gonna need your extra 15 cent stamp. So they have a extra ounce stamp and you can put it on that, but you don't have to use a square envelope. Um, and then, you know, when they pull that out and they open the flap, ta-da, just chicken in. Okay, so I'm going to assume everybody did really, really great on that. But some things to know. Uh, it's classed. I think you guys have already figured out that I'm like in the chat section or Tanya's in the chat section, whether or not you're on Facebook or YouTube watching this live. Um, it is will be then archived onto the Stamp and Scrapbook Expo YouTube page. Okay, so then you can go back and refer to it anytime if you want to make this card again. Or if maybe today watching it, the live version, you didn't actually make your card, you just wanted to watch it go together and ask questions or whatever, that's fine. You'll have access to it to be able to go back and make it again. Um, and then the other thing I will say is please join our Facebook group, the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps, because it's a wonderful international community of uh, pop-up enthusiasts and um, they're posting cards in there and they're just very helpful and supportive and they'll leave lots of beautiful comments on your cards if you post them there. So definitely join us in the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps. Okay, with my last few minutes, I promised to show some cards and some other dies that go really well with the ones that you used in class today. So the first thing I wanted to say is the packaging sample that's on your Bitty Ball pop-up. Uh, this was one that I just wanted to show where you don't even have to stack the balls. If you wanted to just make a single ball to be the head of the animal, then you could just do a circle underneath it with like the arms and things like I did for this bear. That makes it a, like this is just an A2 size card here. And you can also use those pieces if you have a circle die, which you do because you got this, the crosshatch circles as part of the this class today. So this uses, see, a crosshatch circle underneath it for that bear. And then I also, I'm, I only have one hand because I'm holding this double stacked penguin in the other. You can do like a flat version of the animals by just using like a circle for the thing and then just using the accessory here's the the bare ears that come out of the bitty ball and the ovals and stuff those are all in at the little smile so you have that just in your bitty ball set but if you really get into making animals then you can look to some of our animal add-on sets so those are sold separately there's animals add-ons one two and three so far okay so animal add-ons one this one it makes your, it has your pig parts, your fox parts, and your cat parts, and then people have figured out other things to make out of them um, using these parts. But the thing about the add-ons to know is they only add on what's not already in the bitty ball die set or surprise ball. So for animal add-ons one, it really is making use of those arms that come in the bitty ball set. So people that only own the surprise ball animal add-ons one is probably not your choice because this one really makes a lot of use out of the pieces out of the bitty ball whereas animal add-ons two they i had to include arms and legs in this one because they didn't have the right shape in the bitty or the surprise ball so animal add-ons two could be used with either so that one will make your hippo your elephant and your giraffe that we talked about earlier and you'll notice here you can also do the offset style so you don't have to stack them 
one on top of the other. You can, like here's surprise, bitty, here's bitty, bitty, and then this one's two bitty balls, but done as an offset stack, and then it pops up like this. So, you know, lots of ways you can use these things. They're super fun. And don't think that you only can send animal cards to kids because the, you're, you're, lots of people would love these cards. It's just fun. Okay, Animal Add-ons 3 has a moose, a reindeer, and a penguin. You can kind of see this on this double stacked penguin card here. This is too big for my, my camera angle here. So this one has Biddy on the top and then Surprise Ball. But then on the bottom one, I use Surprise and Surprise just to kind of show how that would look. And then these two stack all together into this thicker card with a magnetic closure. But see here, again, using your crosshatch circles as a base, you can use the pieces and make flat animals too with these animal add-ons. They're very versatile. Uh, another thing to know about the animal add-ons is because we do so many small animal sets, you will find in all of our animal add-on set a corresponding small animal. So like we did today with the chick, the chick and the chick, so to speak, the big chick made out of the, the ball and then the, um, the small one. See, here's a set. The winter animals has a penguin and a bear, and both of those things can be made with the animals or uh, with base set. This one, the fox, you'll find it in the woodland animals, and there's actually a video where I made the uh, fox parts. You can actually style a raccoon really easily using animal add-ons one as well, okay? No squirrel yet, but I mean, you know, people are also making other animals. It's not just the ones that we have add-ons for. Um, dog and cat. We have a dog and cat small die set, and we do have those in the animal add-ons as well. The, the dog can just be made from the base set. Do I have a dog here? This one's a... There he is. So that can just be made with the bitty ball. You don't even need an add-on set for it. Um, and this one uses the bitty and the surprise. And then uh, the cat comes in animal add-ons one. So you saw that one earlier cat okay then there is the safari animals and so this is your elephant and your giraffe and your hippo so see that all coordinates so if you want to have big elephant little elephant blah, blah, blah. okay another excellent well here's the surprise ball so if this is your first time this is the exact same die as the bitty but just bigger so that's your 20 percent larger different accessories in this one like i said the original thought on the surprise ball is that people would probably be using it more for um, things like, let me get a couple samples of that. Here's the one from the packaging with photographs on it. So I made it into an apple for our trip to the Big Apple. I put pictures of our trip, okay? And um, then this one is just using some of our charms and animal sets on it, just making it basically kind of like a platform, you know? And you can use it to animate like a billboard. You can just put a big item on it and have it pop up. So you can use it very generically that way. It doesn't have to be you know, you can use it just for the mechanism. So lots of things you can do with them. So surprise ball, if you get really hooked, you know, you might want the surprise ball as well. So then you have both sizes and you can make all sorts of fun things. Um, but in all cases, I'm gonna really recommend the flap and closure die set, because that's the thing about making rubber band pop-ups is that they are gonna wanna spring up on you. So we have this flap and closure die set and all it basically cuts is just four pieces, is a flap with a tab that you can attach. It's a five inch wide flap. Um, and then it's got a decorator piece that'll fit it, so you can decorate it with, is this one decorated? Oh, well, this one is. So there's the inner piece. And then it gets you spacers so that you can stack up underneath your washer so that you, so those spacers are underneath there. There's three under there and three under there. And then you get the washer, and then you just use a brad and some twine, and then you can make closure. So it could be a single flap closure like you see here at the top or at the side, whatever. You can see that on this card. You can see that on this card. That's flap and closure. Um, or you can make it a petal fold, you know, having four come down. And then you can see a little bit of the ball in between, you know, because it leaves the middle open. So on a five by five square, you can do this kind of this kind of closure, which is also fun with either ball. So anyway, that's that's a good choice, is our flap and closure. Okay, I think that's all the time I have. Thank you all so much for joining us for our first online class, the Strap, uh, Stamp and Scrapbook Expo. This has been a lot of fun and I'm sure we'll be doing more. Have a great day.
Okay, so one thing to know about these classes. So you took this class and you made it in the colors in the kit that you purchased from us. And we actually did sell out of all of those kits. So then when you want to go make this card again, of course, you're going to just be using your instructions and cutting your own colors and papers and everything to your liking. So I wanted to show how easy that is to do. I just went into my stash and found a pretty floral paper and picked a couple cardstock colors out of the pattern paper. That's what I usually do. So I pick a piece of pattern paper and then I say, oh, what's a good cardstock color for the card? And I picked it, you know, to kind of match the pink flowers. And then there were some teal flowers in there too. So I thought that would be a good color for the just chicken in thing. And so I just basically just went and made it again. But I wanted to show something where if you didn't want to use magnets, but you had our flap and closure die set. So that's this one. 1118 flap and closure. You could use the spacers and the washers. You wouldn't even need the flaps on this and create a different type of closure than the magnet. So I thought I would just demonstrate that. So I got to the point in the class, you know, with putting it together where all I would have left to do would to be my closure. Okay, so I could do magnets, put them down here in the lower corner, you know, transfer them into the thing. But what I thought I would do instead as I ran into my stash and I found a couple of brads, I happened to, I was just looking for some yellow brads, but I found some that, that were um, flowers. So I thought, oh, well, that's perfect. And then I took the leftover pattern paper and I just cut a couple washers out of it. Okay. And then I did a set of the spacers and these ones, I just put some score tape on the back of the white cardstock before die cutting so that those will all be stickers. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put one of my washers here okay so what i want to do is let's see if i can of course i got i got my chick here okay so i want to put a hole for a brad basically in the center i'm just going to eye it like this okay all right so you know what let me just clip my my chick down here okay then i'm going to take my washer or my spacers and I'm going to stack three of them around that hole. So that's just going to give the washer some space. Okay. One, two, and those are stickers, so it makes it easier. But yeah, I could have glued them on. Okay, one, two, three spacers. Okay, so that's just going to give some height to my washer. Okay, then I've just gone and found some twine some baker's twine and I'm actually going to put my twine through that hole and let's see, I should have somewhere, yeah, I just use these little flossers that you get um, at the grocery store, you know, in, by the dental floss area and that works really well as basically a needle threader or a twine puller, oh sorry, apparently a piece of hair too. Um, so then now, okay, now my twine's in there and then I can tape that twine down inside let's see do i have a tape runner handy i do let's just get the end of that this is all going to get sealed up so i'm just kind of trying to hold my twine in there for now okay and i still don't want to seal it up because i want to put my washer with my brad through it and open up those brad prongs inside like this Okay, now I can seal this down. And instead of magnets, I'm going to use the flap and closure system. So basically brads and twine and washers and spacers. Okay, so there's one half of my closure. All right, now on this half, where I'd really like that to go, to be able to go around it like this and keep that card close would be in the middle about right there, okay? So, but I, I'm on a transparency, so I have to think about that. So here's what I thought. I said, okay, well, I'm gonna go to my crosshatch circles. Instead of doing that hexagon on the inside as a place to write a personal greeting, I'm gonna step up and go a little bigger so that I have a place to actually disguise brad prongs as well. So here's my thought. I'm gonna put the bigger circle behind there first, and then I just check it and make sure that it doesn't obscure too much of my chicken. I can still see the chicken's face, so something like this, okay. That's about right there. I'm going to just add some tape runner in the blue area. Okay, so 
adhesive is hidden. Okay, so great. Now I can put my other, where's my other washer? Okay, I can choose kind of a spot for my other washer where it's not going to obscure my greeting. So maybe right there. And then put a, let's see, I should probably do that on this. Put a hole through my transparency for my brad. Okay, so first I put the washers on, or the spacer, spacers, sorry, I to call things the right things. So this first I'm gonna put the spacers on. Stack three of those around that hole. One, two, okay, three. Okay, then I put my wash on. This one I don't need twine through because it's just this one's just the wrap around version. So open up my prongs inside. Okay, now look, this is how it's going to work. Now I can just take my twine. Oh, sorry, get get that learn to stick up a little bit around like this to keep the card closed. So I didn't have to use magnets at all. So that is another option. Okay, and then I just have one last thing to do, which is I've got brad prongs showing here. So what I did is I just cut the next size circle down because that had the pretty cross hatch on it. And I'm gonna glue that in place inside. And so I'll still have a place to write my personal greeting. It just, instead of being the hexagon that we used on the original card, it'll be this double circle set because I decided not to use magnets. Okay, so essentially the exact same card, just with different colors, colors out of my stash. And instead of using magnets, I used the flap enclosure die set to just make a, a twisty close instead. Okay, so anyway, I just wanted to mention that because I really do, you know, we put all this time into designing this beautiful handout and everything. And we want people making these projects again. And I don't want you to feel like if I can't find this exact green paper or, you know, that I can't make this car. Just go into your stash and find colors that are pretty and then expand it, make it your own. Okay, let's say that you weren't enrolled in this class. In other words, you didn't buy a kit from us. You can still go watch the kit instructions there at karenberniston.com forward slash kit dash instructions. Okay, oh, here, I put that on a post-it note, make it easier. Okay, and on that same uh, pl place where you can watch the video instructions of me doing the paper pre-cutting, and the die cutting, you can also download this actual PDF handout and print it out so that you will have it, okay? Or if you were a student in the class and it came in your kit and you lost it or threw it away or whatever and you need another copy, you can find it there. If you join our Facebook group, the Karen Berniston Pop-Up Peeps, Peeps, we will put it in the file section there as well. We want people making just chicken in cards, whether you bought a kit from us or not. Okay, now, if you wanted to make this card again and you were in the class or even if you weren't, as you know, you were required to have three of the die sets, the bitty ball, the crosshatch circles and the spring animals to do your die cutting, but then we pre-cut a few pieces for you. So I told you what those die sets are. They're the chicken, pig, and lamb. That's where the bow came from. The backyard charms for the little flowers to cover the magnets, the alphabet for the chicken letters, and then word set 10 thinking of you to do the just and the in, okay? So let me find all of those dies. I've got them in a stack here because what we're going to do to make it easier on you so that you can make more just chicken in cards and be able to cut those things is we're going to give you 15% off select dies from karenberniston.com between today, March 14th and the 18th. So you got four days to do some ordering and you're going to use the code class to get that um, all uppercase, just the word class to get that 15% off. And we're going to give you that 15% off of the dies that are in this class. Okay. Some of them, if you, if you bought a kit and you already had maybe these three dies, but maybe you want to buy the other ones that we pre-cut for you so you can make more of these cards. Or maybe you're just getting started and you need all the dies. Any portion of them, you can get that 15% off by using that code class. So let me tell you what those are. They're the bitty ball pop-up. That's what we basically used to make the chick. So that had most of the pieces in it that we used to make the chick. I mean, it had all the pieces in it that we used to make the chick because we didn't have to go outside of anything else. The, our big circles cross hatch is the one that we use to make the window. And what's nice about our cross hatch sets is that there's seven dies in each set and they alternate between cross hatch and then you get one with just a solid and a little score line and then cross hatch and then so on and so forth. So you can do like we did on this card, by we I mean me, because <laughs> I'm the only one who made this one, you know, where it's not cross hatch on cross hatch on cross hatch, you know, so that you get that little break 
in the eye. Sometimes you want the cross hatch and sometimes you don't, so you can layer them together like that. And those come, we have the circles, ovals, squares, rectangles, and long rectangles to fit the slimline dies. So we have lots of styles of cross hatch um, if you want to go look at those. And then the other one you had to have for class was your spring animals, which is where the little chick came from. Um, Easter's around the corner, so you've got that little bunny and that little broken egg is so cute. So dig that one out and use it for some other things. Okay, if you want any of the other dies that we pre-cut for you, okay, the only thing we used the chicken, pig, and lamb for in this set was that little bow, um, but these are sure cute little dies, and um, I particularly love that fork and bib that come that you can put on the pig because they'll fit in any of the other animals too, so, you know, our thought was like you can send someone a, oh, pig out, it's your birthday type of card, but you know, you can definitely use those little pieces on any of the other animals. And you also get that chicken. So then see, that would be another option because you have the chicken, you have the chick. I mean, maybe even this one on the front of your next card instead of the chick where it's just, and then it's the actual chicken there instead of a chick. Huh? Might even be more, uh, more accurate. I don't know. Now I kind of wish I would have done that for this one. But anyway, okay, so have fun with that. The alphabet set, good all over alphabet set. This is what we use for the letters. Um, we also have it in a number set, so if you want numbers to match, uh, we've got that. Uh, this one, the just sitting here thinking of you die set is nice because the thinking of you is all connected together. It's a real nice size and it'll fit. You know, you can use that independently. So you could just say, you know, the just sitting here thinking of you is kind of like on the front of the card. You could put just sitting here and then inside thinking of you. And that goes really well with like some of our pop-ups. Like we have a pop-up um, family room that has a couch and a chair, and then we have a pop-up Adirondack chair. So either of those would be cool to put the just sitting here thinking of you. But you can just use just thinking of you or even just thinking of you. So, and as you know, we were actually able to pull the I in out of this one to make the just in the in um, for the card that we made today. And then these were where the little flowers came from that we used when we covered the magnet. So I used just the top part flower there of those two but this one's got like a really cute fairy and a mushroom and a snail and a butterfly and then a piece of grass so real nice size to these and i find that i use these flowers a lot with and without the stems you know so um i, I use this set a lot actually it's a real cute one okay but we're also going to include in our 15 percent off select dies we're going to go ahead and include the flap and closure as well because that's just such a good add-on if you do have the bitty ball um, or the surprise ball to be able to make closures. And like I said, you know, sometimes if you don't have magnets or don't want to use magnets, it's really easy to make those twine closures on your cards with or without the flap. Like in this case, we already had a flap, so I didn't have to add, you know, the one from here. I just needed to use the, the spacers and the washers. Okay, now, if you have all of that stuff already or you're not into that, we're also going to give free shipping in the same time period, the next four days from 14th to the 18th on our website, KarenBerniston.com for orders that are over $15. And I should have written on here USA addresses. I'm sorry, that's, we have to keep that to domestic shipping, but free domestic shipping for orders over $15, you do not need a code. So you'll be able to just get that. It'll just show up in your, in your shopping cart that you get free shipping. So again, thank you so much for watching this class project, our Just Chicken In pop-up card. This was a lot of fun. And uh, again, I hope you join our Facebook group and share some of the fun things that you've made. Thanks.